It's the intellectual man that appreciates a well-balanced, sorted sports car. The issue is that typically scholars can't afford Porsches. So what does the enlightened man do? He gets one of these. Today I have with me the long-hailed king, the Mazda Miata in RF form. And I have the relatively new Challenger, the Toyota GT86 in the new TRD trim. So let's grab the keys and see which one's better. So we're gonna set off in the Miata because the Miata is always the answer, right? Well, that's what we're here to find out. And the thing to keep in mind as we go through this is it's not really all about engines and power, but more balance and fun. But with that being said, gotta start somewhere. Power seems like a good place to do it. So what we have here is the ND2 Miata. So it's a two liter naturally aspirated engine. However, they've done stuff to it to make it a little bit more revvy and a little bit more peppy. Now it revs all the way to 7,500 and it peaks at 181 horsepower. So those aren't necessarily figures to ride home about. However, we're here for the experience and what better way to experience a small open top roadster than with a manual. And I will say the manual does make this car. The pedal box is great. You can heel toe downshift. It's a little bit better than the 86. Now, in true sports car fashion, the power will go from your mill to the back wheels and the RF only comes in club and GT trim, which means it's going to get a limited slip differential in the back, helping you manage torque and traction. Now steering is quite good. That's one of the best things about this little guy. The steering has a great on-center feel. There's a nice weight to it. There's pretty good feedback. I think the feedback in the 86 might be just a touch better, but overall a great rack. And when you need to come to a stop, does that too. You can option Brembo's on this thing if you really want to and personally I think I might because I think they work really well and they match the personality of this car especially if you're gonna take this thing on spirited drives which you should. Now one of the reasons that this Miata is able to keep pace with cars near double and triple and quadruple its price point is because of something called smiles per gallon. And what that means is fun behind the wheel. The best thing about this car is you feel like you personally are achieving something because you're able to ring it out and drive it 10 tenths. And it's a very rewarding feeling because you're getting the most out of the car. You feel like you're progressing and getting better as a driver and it's fan-freaking-tastic. Now another important piece to that is weight and dynamics. And even with the RF, the added 100 pounds that you get with this metal roof, this thing is still under 2,500 pounds and you can just chuck it anywhere. Actually, to be totally honest, I've looked at the specs and the balance is close to 50-50 with the normal ragtop, but with the RF and the, the metal roof, the balance is a little bit more skewed to the back end and you have a better balance ratio. So it's actually 49% uh, or 49% in the rear and 51 in the front rather than 48 in the rear and 52 up front. So. RF looks a little cooler, adds a little bit more balance, weights out the car, pretty good. Now on the RF, in a GT trim or a club trim, remember those are the only two trims that come on the RF, you will get as standard a dual wishbone front suspension with Bilstein damping and in the rear you'll get a multi-link system with monotube damping. And what that translates to is basically each wheel is specifically managed to control the weight and the balance of the chassis. Meaning that with the limited slip rear differential, <laughs> this thing basically is telepathic. Now you will still get a bit of body roll and you can break the tires loose in the back a little bit for a little bit of frisky fun. And hey, that's kind of the point, right? So, I don't know. 
the smiles per gallon thing I still think is the best thing about this car. But let's check out the TRD, the GT86, and see how it competes with this. <laughs> All right, now right from the jump, you can tell that these cars have very different personalities. This GT86 is much more serious, and that's partially and largely due to the fact that this has the TRD performance package. Now, with that package, you get a bunch of more track focused items such as uh, you have bigger brakes, you have sticky My uh, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, uh, you have a TRD specific exhaust which you can probably hear. Sounds great, but it does drone. There you go. Yeah, unless your foot is just like just on the throttle, not really giving it any gas, but just kind of resting on the throttle, it drones pretty badly, if I'm honest. But the brakes work really, really well. Uh, the tires with their stickiness add another element of confidence in here. Now, the previous generations of this car, the previous years, have kind of had a reputation of being a little bit more tail happy and playful, we'll, we'll say, but the, the, the differential in the back is limited slip and that mixed with the sticky tires really really balances this car out a lot more it feels much more mature in the bends now another thing that you'll get on here is TRD specific sway bars and dampers so the ride is pretty harsh on the road but when you're hustling it around you're really thankful for it you've got loads of mechanical grip from the tires and then you've got great bite and stopping power from the brakes and it's just it just comes together really really well really really focused and dialed in chassis very impressive we'll huck it into this turn so much so much grip wow <laughs> wow <laughs> So, with all this more serious and sporting track performance bits on this thing, does it make it any less fun? No, it doesn't, actually. It makes it a little bit more focused and rigid, but the fun is definitely still there. You still have a decent amount of power, and I think this is probably a good time to talk about that. So, under the hood here, you will get a naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine like you do in the Miata. However, this is a Boxer 4 uh, developed and, or co-developed with Subaru, so you get a very specific tone from the exhaust. It's got 205 horsepower, um, and it's the same amount of power as in non-TRD specific engines. But that's okay. Because this isn't a, this car is not about power. This car is about balance, handling, and that's what we're gonna do here. Again, good speed, excellent grip, and then just pull out. Now, one thing that I do have to mention about this powertrain is the fact that you will have a massive torque dip between 3,000 and 5,000 RPM. Now, with that being said, peak torque is made at about that 3,000 RPM mark, and it peaks at about 156 pound-feet. So it's kind of wanting a little bit for power, but that's no surprise with this thing. Other than that, same basic formula here. Uh, naturally aspirated four up front, six-speed gearbox with a, with a clutch, and rear power. The nice thing here is that you also have a limited slip differential in the back. Like I said, the difference in the front end with the Miata is that you have a McPherson strut system up here and you have a multi-link in the back similar to the Miata. Now, I won't lie to you, the fixed dampers on here can be a bit rough and we talked about that a little bit earlier. The suspension does a great job at balancing the car, but it doesn't do anything for the ride quality when you're not pushing it. Now, taking a step back and kind of understanding what this car is about, we 
we have to really remember the point of this video, and that's talking about the balance of these cars. With power figures at around 200 horsepower or less, weight is a huge, huge factor. And that's where both of these cars perform really, really well. They're both so close to that 50-50 kind of golden ratio in terms of weight distribution, and both are very, very light. I think the Miata was just, just under, 2,500 pounds, and I believe this is about the same. But the way that the body and chassis respond to your inputs is just something that's, and I used the word before, and it's telepathic, but I think to a much better degree here in the GT86 because you have the stickier tires, so you have more confidence with grip. You have the bigger Brembos, so you have more confidence in your stopping power. And yeah, you have a torque dip in the middle of your rev band, which is kind of laughable for a naturally aspirated mill, but you, you rev this thing out, you get it at 10 tenths, and you really, really understand what makes this thing such a riot. Now, people will love or hate this car, but the people that do hate on it, I think you have some soul searching to do. If you're just looking for powers or just looking for drag, this is not the car for you. This car is for somebody that really wants to hit up a road course and get better at being a driver. Now, when it comes to the design of the Miata, you can always tell when one's coming up on you because it has this big grin. Um, and I think that's probably intended to match the face that you're supposed to have behind the wheel. Um, but anyway, th the biggest thing for this ND generation, the fourth generation, is in previous, um, all the Miatas have been very kind of bulby and round and kind of not super intimidating. So they have these big dopey grins on them. This one is the first generation to really kind of like sharpen up. I mean, the headlights are more squinted. There's that side fin light that's really kind of sharpened up. Um, the, whole, the whole design um, for this generation has really kind of been, let's say, let's say matured. I think that's probably a good word for it, but but you still have that characteristic smile on the grill, and I just, I love that about this car because that's really embodies what this car is about. And now that brings me to the RF part of this Miata, and this is the first time that we've seen something like this on a Miata. Uh, for this ND generation, um, they brought the RF, which means that it's a target top rather than a soft top. Um, in previous generations, it's always been soft top as standard. You could get an optional hard top or you could buy one from the aftermarket. Um, and that's kind of always what it's been. And the hard top is not something that you can take with you. So you would take, you would put the hard top on, take it off, kind of like if you had a Jeep Wrangler. You take your doors off, you take your roof off, you have to leave it somewhere uh, and then hope you don't get rained on. This takes care of that for you. So you have the refinement and the quietness of the hard top, but it actually goes back into uh, a piece of the car so you can actually still put things in the trunk, go somewhere uh, and then put the top up if you need to. And personally, I like the way that it looks. I think it makes it look a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more sporting, uh, and a little bit more masculine, dare I say. Um, but I think it looks really, really cool. But then while we're back there, we might as well talk about the rear. And I have to say, again, it's, it's very elegant. It's coded design language, all that good stuff. The only thing that I don't like uh, is the, the dual port exhaust on the right-hand side. I mean, I, I like the symmetry of the NC uh, Miata, the, the one pipe on one side and the one pipe on the, on the other side. And that's just kind of a nitpick, but that's kind of what I'm about. Um, so that's really the only gripe that I have about the look of this car. Now, that brings us to the interior of the car, and this is where the Miata kicks the absolute crap out of the GT86. The interior here, the build materials, the design, the way it all comes together is so much more premium. It's so much more elevated than the GT86. Uh, I mean, I, you've got leather, you've got Alcantara in the GT86, that's fine, but you have like nice stitched leather in here. Um, your plastics, they have like a nice finish to them. There's a good weight and I mean, all that, I won't go into everything, but it's definitely a much better place to spend time. <laughs> um, one thing that I will say is in terms of practicality, uh, the GT86 kicks the mess out of this, so they've kind of traded that. Um, that just, I mean, it goes along with the territory. Uh, the GT86 is a two plus two, so you have two uh, front seats and then you have two rear seats that you can fit my dog in, who is 15 pounds. But you do have a bigger trunk. Uh, obviously with this and the hardtop, you have uh, limited trunk space, so like putting this lawn chair to go filming in this thing is, it was a challenge, I won't lie. Uh, and I, with, my just, with just my camera gear, I'm pretty much maxed out on space on this thing. So yeah, with, with practicality and, and, and cargo, you're not gonna get a lot from this Miata. 
Now when we think about it, the Miata is really about lightness, um, sports, dynamics, and handling. So having frivolous things weighing you down like passengers or luggage or necessities, it's, 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 it kind of contradicts what this car is about. Um, no, but in reality, I would love to have a glove box <laughs> and a little bit more space. So we'll leave it at that. But with that, we'll talk about the 86. So this car originated back in about 2013, uh, and it's gone through some little mid-cycle refreshes, some updates. Uh, they've done a lot of tweaking to um, the chassis and the suspension and little tuning, things like that to make it more sporty. Um, but they've also done some stuff to the aesthetic. The biggest differentiation and diversion from the original design was obviously when Scion kind of bit the dust and then this became the Toyota 86 versus uh, the Scion FRS. Uh, that's when it got the new front face, the new headlights, all that sort of thing. Uh, and this is also affected by the TRD package on here. So you get a little bit more aggressive front end, uh, you get different wheels which are specific to this trim, you get big Brembo brakes on the front and the rear, uh, and then you have a TRD specific exhaust too. Overall from the outside with the proportions and the, and the styling, I think, they've, I think they've done a good job. I think it's a really good looking car, it's a handsome car, it definitely says sports car, which obviously is what it is. So I think, I think overall, yeah, it's a good look. <laughs> it isn't until we get to the interior that um, the design kind of takes a tumble. Um, so yeah, like I said, the car originated in 2013. They haven't done a lot to update it, uh, and that's pretty apparent in the cabin. Um, the biggest change they've made is to the head unit, and it's a little better, but it's still lacking modern features. Uh, the, the worst thing that I experienced this week when I had this car was just like the, the struggles that I had pairing my phone to the Bluetooth and actually like playing a song was laughable. Like my phone connected to the Bluetooth fine, but then I had to go to like a totally different setting. It didn't just jump to the phone default. Uh, it, was, it was really weird. Like I could turn the entire uh, head unit like off or the, the sound off. Uh, I don't, it was, it was weird uh, in any case, but it was just, it was kind of laughable how, how challenging that was. Um, so the technology could use a little bit of work. Um, also, in terms of like fit and finish and the materials, they do a little bit to jazz up the cabin. I mean, you've got Alcantara on your door panels, you've got Alcantara on the seats, you've got Alcantara on the dash, and I'm not a huge Alcantara guy, but I get that that's kind of what you're looking for in something like this that's a track-ready, track-ready um, sports car. The problem is that it's also covered in some pretty cheap plastics. I mean, the, the shifter is kind of straight out of Subaru, and to me, it's just, it's kind of chintzy. Um, I think they could have done a little bit more with that. But I mean, when, when you talk about, it, this is built to a price point, that's when it starts to make sense. So from an interior standpoint, this doesn't really hold a candle to the Miata. The Miata is a much more elegant design, it's much more modern, the technology works a little bit better. Uh, it just doesn't really hold a candle to it there. Uh, where it does kick the mess out of the Miata is in practicality. So the Miata, obviously, being a target top and even the normal rag top, sacrifices a lot of trunk space. You have a really big trunk here, but what's more than that is you can actually fit, um, or you can actually have two seats. So this is a two plus two. Um, I don't recommend putting any human beings back there because uh, it is quite small. Um, but you can absolutely bring a buddy on a long road trip, put luggage in the back very comfortably. If you need extra space, the rear seats actually drop down, and then you have a pretty massive and cavernous uh, back seat. So the practicality on this thing actually is quite good. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's definitely something to be said about that. All right, so the analogy I'm making between the Boxster and the Cayman is a little bit of a reach, but it does hold some truth. Now. Both of these cars, while they compete, have very different personalities. While the Michelin Pilot Sport uh, tires and the Brembo brakes, the stiffer suspension and the TRD handling package make this GT86 a much more track ready, autocross ready, racy vehicle, the Miata doesn't take itself quite as seriously. This Miata is just happy to be on a back road with some curves, throwing the body around and having some fun. So that leaves us with the million dollar question, which one deserves your money? Now, the RF is two grand more expensive and it's less practical, but I think for me, it's the one that gets my money. It's a little bit more comfortable. You don't have a loud and obnoxious exhaust drone all the time, and the interior is just a little bit nicer. So for me, the winner is the Miata. 
all hail the king. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.